it's always very easy to get around in these train stations. You just either tug your bag or push it on a cart. And then from the train station, we can actually walk to our hotel. There's an underground shopping mall that goes for two blocks and takes us right up the ramp to the Grand Hotel Balioni. <laughs> it's like staying in a palace when you stay at the Balioni in Florence. It's located right next to the San Lorenzo street markets, which have an abundant array of things for sale. Next morning, we're up for a wonderful breakfast on the top floor of the Hotel Balioni. It's quite a spread. They've got nice big tables. We can sit together. This is a wonderful way to start the day in a very elegant setting. And from here, you get this fantastic view. There's the Duomo in the distance, looking out at the rooftops of Florence, the clay tile roof. The Hotel Balioni has got a beautiful rooftop terrace garden. You can have dinner out here in the summertime, drinks out here in the evening, or come out in the morning before breakfast and have a look at the beautiful view of the rooftops of Florence. It's really an incredible spot. We're going to take the public bus to have a look at kind of the residential back streets of the city, the place where the real people live. And we're heading for a truly wonderful destination. It's across the river, crossing the Arno River. And we're going to go up the hill to Piazzale Michelangelo. There's a copy of the David up there. This is one of the world's great panoramas, so it's worth the effort to get here. The vista takes in the full span of Florence, spreading below you in a sea of clay tile roofs, punctuated by many domes and towers, bridges and hills framed in the background with the commanding yeah, presence beautiful. of the great Duomo rising above it all. It only takes about 15 minutes to soak up the scene but this brief expedition is most rewarding. There's a very pleasant walk downhill that leads to quiet lanes along the river and then to the Ponte Vecchio, which you can reach in about 20 minutes. This pedestrian lane is called Via del San Salvatore and continues through an impressive gate through a surviving segment of the ancient fortified wall down at the bottom of the hill. And then it joins up with Via di San Nicolo to lead you through a quiet historic neighborhood of former Renaissance palaces. And in a few blocks you reach the Arno River and gain the best view of the most famous bridge in town, the Ponte Vecchio. And look straight across the river, you'll see the Uffizi once again. And perhaps there'll be some rowers out because there is a boat club attached to that lawn right at the foot of the Uffizi. And while you're on this side of the Arno, enjoy a stroll past art galleries, antique shops, ateliers, little piazzas, and of course, more restaurants. And here too you will find important churches. Santo Spirito sits on a picturesque small piazza that often has an organic foods market, Piazza della Repubblica. This area used to be a bustling center of medieval and Renaissance Florence until it was all knocked down in a misguided 19th century urban renewal project. It's very easy to find your way through this regular grid of lanes well, after maybe a half an hour of wandering through these lanes, you will arrive at the Piazza della Signoria, the town's other major square, with its many statues and cafes, and the massive architecture of the Palazzo Vecchio looming above, the center of political power for 700 years, and still the City Hall of Florence. Do have a quick look in the front door to 
admire the grotto design of the courtyard and a bronze replica of Verrocchio's Puto holding a dolphin. There are clusters of important statues in the Piazza della Signoria, but don't be fooled by the Big David, which is only a copy, it's a very good copy, of Michelangelo's original masterpiece that you must see later on in the Academia. Foremost in the square are John Bologna's equestrian statue of Medici hero Grand Duke Cosimo I and Amanati's Neptune fountain. But the best treasures are in the open arcade of the Loggia de Lanzi. Cellini's Perseus is probably the most outstanding of all the outdoor statues in Florence, cast in perfect bronze that a recent restoration has brought back to its original luster. The outdoor markets keep going all day, and you are right next to one of the best, so take some time to shop in the colorful straw market, also called the New Market, although it's 500 years old, just one block from the Piazza della Signoria, the great Duomo Cathedral, which was the tallest building in Europe when it was finished in 1434 and is still the world's fourth largest church. The main part of town is only one square mile, but densely packed with interesting things to see. Florence is an ideal city for walking as the distances are short and many lanes are reserved just for pedestrians.